you. So yeah, as, as Jill said, type it in there. I can't see if you raise your hand, but Jill can. So she has the permission to go ahead and interrupt as often as she needs to, believe me. Um, since we don't have to worry about microphones, don't worry about that. Go ahead and eat, go ahead and do your other work and listen if that works best for you. Uh, working remotely has been uh, something that I have done for quite a few years. Um, and now we all get to do it a little bit more, which makes me happy. As Jill said, I work for the Department of Commerce. I started in April full time. Previously to that, I was working with a marketing firm, um, AE2S Communications. Hi, Tammy Joe. And uh, before that, I did a variety of other things oil and gas. I worked with a major oil and gas company in North Dakota. I worked with federal and state and local uh, development agencies. And I was also in water with Garrison Diversion. So I've had a broad range of experiences, some remote some in the office, um, and I've learned to appreciate and adjust to both of them. Department of Commerce is uh, the state agency that handles any kind of economic or community development in the state. We have four different entities under the Department of Commerce, economic development and finance, which is where I'm at, uh, tourism, community development, which is our community development is different because that's the CDBG funds, the grant funds that come from the federal government and roll into state programs. Um, a lot of regional councils administer a lot of that. They do things with the homeless shelters and they do things with um, different social programs in the state. But that's a federal roll through program area, division of community services that is. And then we have workforce, which is exciting because all four of these roll into what we call community development. And that's been my charge from when I was hired to find a way that we can become a full service community development entity. So when we go into a community, let's say our manufacturing primary sector person walks in, um, they're able to talk to you and listen to you as individual members of the community as to what's needed, not just manufacturing, not just value added egg, not just community services. So I'm very excited to be able to roll together all that. Um, it's a change in culture. So don't expect us to be different overnight, um, but it is a great opportunity for us to be able to be out there and helping those individuals, communities, and others that want to grow. So there we are on, and today the challenge is to talk about remote work. And there is a ton of, good advice from a lot of people. Um, I'm going to give you some of what I have found along with what I have figured out myself on remote work. Um, but I'd like to make sure that you guys also chime in whenever you can and what has worked and what hasn't worked. Um, the biggest thing is working from a distance without feeling distance. Um, and so in the chat box right now, it'd be really great if you let me know are you working remotely? And when I say remotely, um, feel free to let me know. Are you working in the coffee shop? Are you working at home? Are you hoteling? Are you in a space? The um, North Dakota government system is going to move because we have so many people now uh, working remotely. We are going to be doing what is called hoteling, where I will go and borrow a space for a day probably in our own division offices, but I can also hotel in a different office. Uh, and so it'll be there. So it's great to see some of you guys are working remotely from home. Um, that's good to know as we talk about what we do next. Um, retirement home and oh, oh man, Arizona, hopefully it's a little bit better than it is here. Um, have an office at work too. Yep, so you have both. Um, oh, <laughs> sad face. Cassidy's in the office every day, uh, but we can give you some tips and tools of when you go back home and or work remotely. Like I said, you were once we get back to normal, you may be um, working remotely, possibly from a hotel for a few days. How do you make best use out of that remote work once we are um, back to what we call whatever normal is? So today we'll talk a little bit about technology, the fact that it is. Um, a part of the solution, but it's not the total solution. Uh, ways to uh, identify how to make it work um, and your challenge, which I modified this a little bit from the last presentation I get done. 
And then we'll talk a little about collaboration and connection, uh, which is really, really important when we are working remotely. I used to work, be the only one that was uh, remote in our offices. And so I would be on the screen and everybody would be sitting around a table and, and, and I'd be like, hey, what about me? Hey, what about me? Um, and, and it became um, one of those challenges that I learned to be really quite loud, sending messages to everybody, typing texts to everybody. I have got an idea. Um, for the most part, people didn't ignore me, but if you were the only one working remotely, it, uh, it does become a difference in how you think about what you do. Um, but it also allowed me to grow in how I collaborated and I connected with people on a different level um, and how I utilized the technology that we did have. So working remotely isn't necessarily a new idea. Um, as there's, you know, actually this kind of started somewhat back and way back in the start of Apple. Um, he, Jobs introduced a computer called Lisa. Now, most of us don't know about it because it wasn't really all that successful. Um, and it was 1983. And they decided to move into the Mac design and development team. He felt that this was where we're headed. Smart man, obviously. And but he felt that their team needed to be insulated from all the outside distractions to work on it. So he moved them to a whole separate building. And they weren't working collaboratively with anyone. They weren't actually part of the team um, and he had little use for what he called the Navy, um, which was the mothership building. Um, and in fact, he wanted to, it says he wanted to fly a pirate flag over top of his own little building and ignore everybody else. Um, well, because they became so disconnected, uh, he was fired. He was fired from that company. Uh, he went on to form his own company, um, which, of course, as many of us know, was purchased back. Apple purchased the company he formed, um, and he's back in time. But it does give you a perspective that if you are remote, it doesn't mean that you are separate from what's going on. You are still part of a very important team, um, and you need to remember that. Um, oops, I went forward too fast. Let me get back on here. Um, uh, the, okay, what happened? Ah! So um, the other example that we have is found in March on Eyewear. Uh, they were founded in 1983 uh, and they were, they had offices all over the countryside, but they didn't, um, they realized that they needed regular ports of their of connections. Um, and so they started spotlighting success stories and they started making sure that certain people visited all those remote areas. And that's, that company actually drove sales to 500 million. And last time I looked, uh, they were still extremely successful, but they embraced working remotely, but connected to people. So technology can be a good thing, um, but it can also be something that we don't, we feel like we're tied to. We're, we're, we have to use it, we have to work together. But it can be a good thing if you intentionally use it. Um, and so uh, while I'm going through a few of the ideas that I have in creating an intentional technology, take an opportunity right now to talk about which is the technology that you use um, on a regular basis in working remotely or working from your office. Just go ahead and type in that, that thing. Okay, is everybody eating? Nobody's typing. All right, that's okay. Um, some of the technology that we use right now uh, include Teams, Zoom. Um, they, there's other platforms out there, but I think what we've found right now is that uh, we're starting to feel a little bit overwhelmed. We're starting to, hey Heather, we're starting to uh, feel a bit fatigued. Um, and so as a people manager, what I found is I don't necessarily set up a Zoom or a Teams call with everyone. Um, I will do smaller groups. I will break our teams down into smaller um, entities and not necessarily committees, but teams. Because even though you have a way to connect on a larger scale, sometimes that technology becomes overwhelming. And so if you're working with somebody, 
don't be afraid to decide to pick up the phone and call them or use this um, back and forth uh, because there gets to be so much noise at times when you have a lot of people on the screen that you end up finding it easy to shut off your video camera. And we'll talk a little bit about that. Now, I, I'm assuming because everybody on here, oh, I forgot to say use things. Okay, I'm not gonna play this one because I forgot to click computer sound, but I will send this um, out to you, but I'm sure many of you have seen what happens in technology. We've had those top 10 now. If you read the Fargo forum, uh, and I believe it was Monday, there was some great, like what we're all sick and tired of when technology happens on, you're muted, uh, the conversation about uh, glitching out or not seeing people. And so there is conference calls in real life are okay, but in times it really does create some of those barriers. And so here's a few tips and tricks that I wanna talk about in terms of what I have found a keys to working for distance. Um, maintain regular hours. Do not assume since you're sitting at home that you just can pop in and go work. You maintain regular hours. The nice thing about being it is you pick some of those regular hours. Do you want to, if it's allowable by your office, do you want to start working at eight o'clock um, and then you can schedule yourself so you don't have times over lunch, you can take a lunch break. Um, the, but pick those hours and be really, really clairvoyant with everybody and clear, here's how much time I'm gonna spend in my office. Um, it gets really, really easy and I do it still, even though I know better, to finish up all the chores and then step back into your office where it's nice and safe and you don't have to see the mess and work again. Um, it's great, but it also burns you out really, really fast. Um, and that's something that they found, um, Airtasker found that remote employees work 1.4 more days every month than people that are going to an office. So even though it's great, it's really important that you maintain those hours and stick to it. Um, create a morning routine. Everybody says this, but it really is important when you're when you are um, working remotely, deciding when you'll sit down at your desk, deciding when you'll start work, um, and then creating routine guides into it. Like, will I check my email first? Much the same as you would have when you walked into an office. Would, will I check my email first or will I stop and grab a cup of coffee first? Will I catch up with my team first? Um, make a few phone calls, check on your teams, see their faces, make sure everybody's working. But get yourself into a routine, same as you would have in an office. You are now at work. Don't kid yourself that you're still at home. Make it at work. Um, leave home once in a while. Today, this morning, I took a little break. I made a coffee appointment and I went into town. We talked business, of course, but it was so refreshing just to get out of my space. Nice space that it is, but get out of my space. And that's my second thought. If at all possible, set aside some space just for your office. Um, ideally, if you can, a door is great. Um, if your office requires you to be at home, check around and see if they have any cubicles left. We have a couple people in our office now uh, from Commerce who went in and hauled out their cubicles um, with full permission, set them up, and because they didn't have space where they could close it. So at least in part of their basements, um, they uh, tour my office, <laughs> um, they have uh, set up cubicles. And so there's a barrier. There's an automatic barrier between home and office. So it gives you a little space. And some of these cubicles you can decorate from the outside, but check and see. A lot of offices have extra cubicles sitting around, or I know for a fact that you can now um, buy them from surplus from the state. So it might be worth it if you have the ability to transport them home with you. There's going to be a ton of cubicles available from state surplus. And those are first up for public subdivisions, but public can buy them after that. Check with that. And if you need to, I can try and find that link and send it off to you guys. Uh, next, don't hesitate to ask what you need. Uh, once again, there might be some surplus extra screens. I work on three screens, to be honest, because I worked from home for so long. Um, I actually purchased some of this stuff before uh, I worked remotely. Um, or work full-time remotely, but I have three screens. 
I pushed our office and I said, make sure everybody has at least one screen, one big screen to work on if you're gonna ask them for that. We were allowed to take home our office chairs. Um, office chairs are an expense, but that, uh, good ones are expensive. So if there's a way that you can get a, um, you're asked to work at home, there's a way that you can get a yearly budget for your home office from your company. Um, one of the companies that I looked at when I was doing research for this uh, actually set aside 150 bucks a year that it was given to an employee uh, if they were required to work part-time from home or wanted to work part-time from home um, where they could go buy what they needed. So it was like lighting or an office chair or some of those things that aren't regular office operational things um, like paper and you know sticky notes and things like that. Um, and basically what it was considered on is a bonus. It's a little bit of your bonus because they know they're not gonna get it back. You're not gonna get the office chair back. Uh, you're not gonna get the light back because you're gonna go buy what you want. Um, so that's something to ask in future budgets. If you're asked to be that remote work person, is this something that you can get? Can you get an allowance? Can I take my chair home? Can I take an extra chair home? Because the last thing you wanna do and being a productive remote worker is be sitting at a card table with a folding chair. Eventually, almost all of us know, this isn't gonna work. If you are forced to do that, take a look at Amazon for super cheap alternatives on resting back support, um, chair support, uh, stack up books so that you have an option to work on a standing up. If you have a surprise, because you're working remotely, if you find like me, um, the first year I worked remotely, I gained 20 pounds. Why? Because I turn around and there's my printer. I don't have to walk a little ways down and get my thing. I don't have to walk that far to get my coffee. I even got so lazy I put a coffee pot in my own office. So I, you know, I was just fill it up, you know. That was really bad for the waistline. Um, and so if there is a way that you can force yourself to at least stand up during the day, uh, get yourself an external computer uh, monitor or computer camera, uh, headsets, because everybody has that docking, barking dog in the background. Um, in fact, the legislature this year has a new saying of kennel the dog because they're so tired of hearing people in the background dog bark. They start each thing with kennel the dog. So that's another thing. The last point on this before I go to the next slide is um, making sure that you inform your family that you are working remotely. Um, when I first started working remotely, uh, my husbands came home at noon and he walked downstairs to my office and he looked at me. He stood there. I said, can I help you with something? He's like, well, you're not seeing the slides. Oh, I probably didn't share my screen. Eek. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's do that then. Shall we share a screen? Oh, host disabled participant sharing screen. Okay. Well, that's okay. We'll just keep talking. There's nothing on the screens, but pretty pictures anyway. Um, I will, uh, we'll figure that out somehow. Um, the the one thing that- well, Try it again, we, try it again. Try it again now? Okay, mm -hmm. uh, so sorry about that. That would be my fault. Here we go, okay. Okay, there you go. Sorry about that, everyone. Um, the, the, he kept, he walked down to my office and looked at me straight in the eye and he just looked at me. He goes, well, what's for lunch? And I, I was like, um, whatever you cook for yourself. Uh, but he thought I was home. Why couldn't I cook lunch? You know, along with noon time, you know, chase you around the desk a little bit, you know, those kind of things. I'm like, no, 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 I am working. If I would have been in my net working, would you have expected me to cook lunch? No. So it takes a while. But set those ground rules right away. My children are very good. They peek in the door and look at me and do hand signals like I'm hungry um, and, or send me a text. Uh, but it's because I've worked at home long enough that they understand what I am expecting out of that. So that, that helps. Um, be sure that you don't, don't feel bad saying it. You need to make sure you do that. Hey, Jill, I am not seeing the chat now when, I did, when that happened. So if you um, can just shoot me, if there's anything that comes up, um, let me know if there's anything I need to answer on a question. So the next, now getting into our teams and, and if you're working with the team, so what is the unified goal? 
What is it that you want to do as a team working remotely? Um, and that's important that you sit down with all of the people in your team right away. Um, you may be working remotely, but what are you expecting? Um, how are you going to tie the goals together and how are you going to communicate together um, and understand the barriers and understand each other's responsibilities when you are commuting and working remotely? Uh, that responsibility is, you know, and then the second question is who's responsible for that? Who is the person that's going to be um, the one that makes sure we're all talking to each other? And it doesn't necessarily have to be your boss. You know, who's the one that's most comfortable working remotely? Um, that can manage this communication system. Um, make sure that you set your deliverables, your deadlines, uh, make sure that you um, stay visible, make sure you turn those cameras on when you are on a team call. Um, and then you, as a remote worker, make sure you're not lost out of sight. If you start feeling that you are um, not being heard, be upfront about it and say, hey, we need to change, either we need to change how we do meetings or we need to change um, how I'm presenting. Sometimes it's our own fault, and sometimes you need to take the action um, as a group on what you do need to do next. The next thing is make sure that you're intentional. Uh, when you're working remote, make sure that you're intentional about connecting. Um, as I said earlier, sometimes we feel like it's overwhelming connectivity right now, um, but a lot of times uh, all it takes is just that one phone call and say, hey, how you doing? A one Teams call using video. Um, if you are a people manager, especially, check in with your people individually um, and make sure that this, things are going right. Because a lot of times if people, if it isn't going right working remotely, you're not going to, you're not going to hear from those people or they're going to become overwhelmed. It's so easy to become overwhelmed remote work. Um, check in with them. But on the same part, make sure that you as an individual employee, let your bosses know. Um, and this comes to if you're expected to work remotely when you're um, traveling um, and you get into a place that you can't work remotely, uh, especially as we're getting all used to these teams and seeing each other and constant connectivity, um, that's going to be expected. Unfortunately, fortunately, it's going to be expected as you get into not being as remote work, but we're still going to expect you to come back to us right away. I'm gonna Teams meet you and how come you didn't answer the phone? How come you didn't check in with me? Um, there are times it just isn't gonna work. And that goes way back to the beginning when you set expectations. Be clear on I'm available from here to here. When I'm traveling, I'm from here to here. Um, and, and make sure you mark that on your calendar. If you're not intentional about what, you're, what you can do as a remote worker, it will become extremely easy for people just to take advantage of it. I do. I expect my people to answer the call right away now. It'll be hard for me to understand that, oh, gee, they're on the road. They shouldn't talk to me. Um, so intentionality, how can we be intentional? Um, again, you build the relationships, no matter if you're a people manager or if you're individual. Um, meet for coffee, meet for tea, have social hours. I'm not big on the social hours, but I do set up a chance to have coffee with my with people on my team. Um, something that worked really, really well in commerce uh, when this first started is the acting, the commissioner at that time was very intentional about connecting. And so she set up coffee time and she would make sure she hit at least once a week, some of those coffee times. And you'd sign up on a spreadsheet um, and those 15 to 20 minutes were coffee with a group of people. And this allowed different agencies to connect together, number one, which is really good because they're not in an office anymore, walking down the hallway. Um, and it also allowed um, people to take a break. They weren't, it was no talking about work for those 20 minutes. And as I said before, it becomes very, very difficult to uh, not um, be super involved when you work remotely and work all the time. So here's a chance. So if you are working remotely or part-time working remotely, um, see if you can't find a way to schedule um, coffee with some people over your normal coffee time or even not the normal coffee time. Figure out how you can do it. And that goes to the next point. Identify at least one person that you're gonna do this with. Will it be virtual or coffee break or lunch? Um, 
some great questions. You know, there's lots of those questions out there on the internet that you can find that are just good starters. But, you know, what is a childhood event that shaped you? What, you know, what, what, who was your mentor? And all of those great questions that you can actually intentionally not talk about work with. That is really important as we work remotely and we don't, um, we don't have that, oops, back up here. Um, we don't have that see you in the hallway kind of connectivity. Um, since I can't see the chat, we're gonna skip this one, um, but I was asking, I was looking for your keys. What is the best point? And feel free to put them in there. Actually, I can't see it. Go ahead, as I'm talking, go ahead and type in there one or two. What are the top things that you see um, are your tools that you work for effective communication? Once again, establishing your workspace. There's so many hints and tips on establishing your workspace um, that, in fact, there was, there is, if you just Google setting up remote workspace, there's like five, six different things. I found tons of things I didn't even think about when I was researching this. Um, ergonomics, uh, make sure that you are taking care of your ergonomics and you are not, um, you are not, Oh, there, I got the chat, good deal. You are not um, creating this or this. If you're working on um, that card table, you don't have the ability to get a, a standing desk or you don't have the ability to get the slide up keyboard. Um, figure out a way so that you don't have long-term problems. Um, this isn't just about a short-term solution. These issues can hand happen in the long-term. Um, Cassidy, great comment, quiet space. Uh, respond to others quickly. That's a good thing when you're working remote. There's that fear, again, of if you're working remote, you're not working. Um, I had that on my very first, very, very first job that I started working a little bit remotely. And there was people in the office who thought I was at home tending my garden. Uh, but I wasn't. I was working, but um, I didn't set those expectations early of here's my office hours. Here's when I'm out of the office. And I didn't, and so soon, um, one of the tools that I worked on that one was to create a report out. Here's what I did um, this week. And here's what it was. So, um, the, you know, if you can get some natural light, it's always great. It makes a huge difference. If you can get outside and see some things, um, that's always good. Once again, prioritize your health. Don't think just because you're home um, you need to work all the time. Uh, mentally and physically, make sure you're, you're thinking about yourself. Uh, drink lots of water. Amen. That's true. Um, that's a very good tip uh, for your health and for uh, make it because you can sit here and you can sit and work for hours. Forget about it. But something else that I found that I don't do now that I'm home is uh, professional development. And so this is great. I'm so glad that, uh, that this is an opportunity. I'm looking forward to catching up with everybody, um, that kind of thing later. But don't forget that your professional development is extremely important too. And that's personal professional development um, and personal development. So if there is an opportunity to take a leadership class, if there is an opportunity to do things and if they're remote, okay, we'll just do it. But block off that time and don't feel bad for not working because you would be doing that in an office or you would be traveling to that remote work. This morning I had coffee with a friend and she says, yeah, my boss is like, take all the virtual training you want because uh, we don't have to pay for you traveling. Um, good and bad, you, you know, she's getting that virtual training but she's not getting out of the office to do any of it. So when you do that, make sure that you are clear on your expectations and make sure that you understand that this is important for your mental and physical health. Virtual meeting etiquette. We all know those virtual meeting etiquettes. Um, don't, don't be afraid to say when somebody else isn't there. Um, don't be, you know, don't be worried about it. Use your webcam if you can, because it does help. Um, and if you can get to in-person once in a while, um, now we're getting better. I really encourage you to do that. Um, so that kind of goes to the last of my work from home kind of things. Um, there is a few things that I want to follow up with um, that are there. Uh, once again, I want to remind everybody, be transparent, set your expectations, 
um, engage as often as you possibly can. Um, document, it's, it's really clear for both sides, employee and supervisor, document how you're going to be communicating and expectations of those communications. Are you gonna have, are you gonna set up morning meetings so you can pull everybody together? Um, are you expecting them to uh, report in at the end of the day uh, what was accomplished? Uh, one person on the remote work that uh, the other class that I did said that they changed their um, calendar and blocked off the colors so that people would know what they were working on. The supervisor absolutely loved it because it was like, okay, this block is this, this block is this. Um, and so then it was easy to report out or easy to ask questions. I saw you worked you know, quite a bit on this project. How are you doing as a, as a supervisor? Is that? So it was both ways. The employee was conscious about making sure that that was done and the supervisor was conscious about asking also. And that's really, really important. Um, build that strong rapport with your team. Um, and this is more difficult if you've just started as a remote worker. Um, those are real challenging options. Uh, and so as a, if you're an employee who moves to a new company and you're remote working, um, reach out, reach out to do the coffee, you know, invite yourself to things. Um, if you're the supervisor who just hired somebody who's remote working, which we will be doing here real soon, um, critical for us to touch base with them at least once a day. Uh, because learning a new job and working from a distance are two things that become very challenging, especially if you're brand new into the workforce. So as a supervisor, it's going to be critical that we reach out to them. Um, and that goes back to that setting side time for one-on-ones. You aren't going to see them in the coffee room. So set aside time for one-on-one. -on -one. If you're an employee and you don't get that with your boss, ask for it. Um, that goes back to asking for equipment that you need in your, in your place. Ask for it. Ask your boss, can I get a little time this time and this time? And be prepared when you do get that time um, because you're not going to see them on a regular basis. So be prepared. Have that thing. Um, you remote employees sometimes are going to feel like they're disturbing somebody through that. Um, as a supervisor, if you have a supervisor, be sure you have an open door policy. Make sure that you say, give me a call. If I can't answer it, I'll, I'll let you know and follow up. Um, but try and when they schedule the meetings, especially remotely, if somebody schedules a meeting with you, make sure and it's an employee or it's a one-on-one -on -one with another employee, be sure that you take that call um, because if you don't and it happens more than once and they're you're both working remotely, um, you're going to start feeling like you're not important. They're not important to you. Um, and as an employee, don't take offense if it doesn't happen. Um, but if it does happen as, as an employee, and I've done this before, I've straight up said, you know, hey, I really need to connect with you. What works best? So those are super important when it comes to that. Um, now, next, we all had expectations at the beginning of the year. Um, one of the things we're going through with commerce is, is goal setting and um, the entire commerce team went remote. Um, COVID just threw us all for a loop. Uh, their goals are not gonna make it. I've got a couple employees who are saying, are you gonna fire me? I didn't meet any of my goals. I'm like, no, you're not gonna get fired. But here's our opportunity to take a look at how we can reevaluate our goals. So I'm doing that myself as a remote employee. I'm saying, hey, this is what I said I was gonna do, but because I'm remote, here's the new opportunities. Everybody was home. I'm now touching base with a lot more people. So what were your goals um, and what can your goals be if you are working remote? Are there opportunities for you to get more work done working remote? Are there opportunities for you to connect with different groups of people? Are there opportunities for you to really have focus on a project? So if you are thinking of working remote, um, don't be afraid to tell your supervisor, these are the benefits of me working remote. And these are the things that I'm gonna be able to do because of remote work. Um, and here's my clear expectations of myself. What are your expectations? Because it has to be a two-way street. Um, you have to be able to um, justify that remote work um, while you're still being able to enjoy remote work. That's important too. If you don't like working remotely, be open about it. We have several employees who hate it, 
hate it and are so excited to go back to the office situation. And so those conversations, we've had that, okay, when we get to go back, what, what, is, what is it? Do you want an office space? Do you not want an office space? Be clear with your supervisor that you either like it, don't like it, or here's your expectations when you are home. And the last thing is, um, you know, keep experimenting. You know, does this work? Does this work? Don't feel bad saying, gee, I am really not excited about this kind of team setting, or I am, don't feel like I'm getting heard this way. I would like to do it this way. Um, look out for different platforms you can use too that might be unique. Uh, there's, there's so many different platforms now out there that might be something that works better for your connectivity, might be work, something that works better for your um, individual purposes. Um, don't feel bad experimenting as we go through this because remote work and um, expectations of remote work are not gonna change as we go. So this is, I hate the term new normal, um, but this is, uh, what is gonna happen, whether you're in your current job or whether you're looking for a new job, um, they are going to say, can you work remotely in the applications? I, I truly believe that. Um, and if you are working remotely, they're gonna expect you to have certain skill sets. And I say that because we are hiring two people, um, we'll talk about the updates, just in the community development side, um, they will be remote. They, if they, they live, if they choose to, they can, live in Bismarck and go to the office. Um, but it, if they don't, they have the option of being remote, but there's clear expectations uh, on my part and the rest of the team's part as to what they can do and can't and, and expected to outcome. So remote work's not going away. It's just how you wanna approach it and what you feel comfortable doing with remote work. Um, but it is one of those things that you need to shift a mindset in some cases as to how you work and what you do. Um, but then you also need to take the initiatives on what you can do remotely and, and what you feel is really important for you. So whew, I talk really fast, sorry guys, especially when I don't have anybody to, um, they're not making faces at me. Uh, so I would love to take a few minutes now and um, just have you ask any questions about remote work. Uh, I know Teal had asked to see my office. It's really a disaster now, but I can do that if you want it. Just, just tell me, tell, it should, shoot me some questions or raise your hand. No questions? Either you fell asleep or you got your mouth full. Okay, so I'm gonna do this quick work. I will show you my office. Um, excuse the disaster. Oh, okay. So um, one of the things that I bought early on um, was a desk and I bought a three-sided desk and I've moved this thing around um, quite often. And then it's really hard to see, isn't it? Um, Maria? And then I, yeah. Maria? Yeah. You still have your share screen up. Uh, <laughs> okay, but well, we'll show the, we'll show the, I see somebody asked a question. So we'll stick to that because I really hate showing my messy desk. Good, okay. Uh, setting goals and expectations and accountability for different and an in-person team versus having to work remotely. Okay, um, I'll talk about what I did. Um, my very first job working on uh, remotely and I was working for a board at the time. And so what I did was um, I told them, here's the 10 projects that I will be working on in the next two weeks. I set, I, I set, I set weekly goals. Um, I said, here's the, the, ten, the 10 things I'll be working on the next two weeks. And then at the end of every week, I sent in a report. Uh, it was a kind of a pain in the butt, but it assured both the people that I was working for and the communities that I was working with uh, that I had accomplished something that week. And I told them the hours that I worked on it and everything else. This was a part-time job now. So I, it was based on, um, it wasn't as important as full-time benefited. But I've kept that up as a full-time employee because it becomes very easy for, even though we're all working remotely, it becomes very easy for a supervisor to think that we aren't doing anything. And I've instilled that in my new team because uh, the same thing has happened where other employees are saying, well, he doesn't do anything all day. 
And so I simply asked them, give me an update. Every week, two, three sentences, what are you working on? And then tell me what you're going to be working on. Uh, that has helped a lot on the um, daily reporting back and forth. Um, it also goes back to the question of coming across as a micromanager. Um, you set your own goals is what I ask. There are always projects that the team has to work on. I get it, um, but set your own goals, put some realistic uh, expectations on those goals um, and be prepared that I will ask you on a weekly basis what, how you've been doing. Um, I don't check in every day with my guys, um, but as we've as we have started becoming more comfortable with each other, I've noticed that my guys check in with me every day. And they're like, hey, this is what we got going on. Hey, I need this person to help me out. Hey, can you help me deliver this? And so um, it's a trust factor, but it's also helping employees understand that we are, um, they are responsible also for gaining trust for everyone else. That one, um, it becomes a little difficult sometimes uh, because they, uh, sometimes it doesn't work and we've lost a few employees because of that. Um, we've lost because it is, it requires you as an employee to be very organized. It requires you as an employee to um, be, take the initiative, very much so. Um, and in some, we've had, two that have left commerce, um, not because they hated the job, it was just taking that um, initiative on a regular basis was out of their comfort zone. So there are some people who cannot work remotely. It's just the way it is. Um, and some people who will be asked to come back to the office once we go have an office space to go back to, just because they need to have that kind of regular schedule set up by them. Um, setting goals and expectations. Accountability is different than in-person team versus having. Um, once again, we, I ask, this is sorry to be I, I, I all the time. Um, I ask my team to work together on setting goals. Um, we are just heading into that redo on goal setting purposes. And once again, I'm gonna say, okay, here's where your goals were. Now you got all screwed up because you're working remotely, but what it got better. Once again, you know, if I was to walk into my boss's office and say, I want to work remote, here's what I want to do, here's how I'm going to be better by working remotely, and here's how I'm going to accomplish it. Um, I've been doing the same with my team. Okay, what are your goals? And I'm letting them choose those goals. Um, and then we come together on the top three. What are those top three goals that we can do as a team that aren't based on individual goals? Those are separate. Top three goals we can do as a team. Okay, now how do we accomplish them? Um, one of the best change manager people I ever talked to, he talked about, okay, you go on and you're going to talk to somebody who wants to accomplish something, anything. And you go, this is where they want to be. Okay, I get it. This is where they don't want to be, the bottom of this triangle. Okay, I get it. So what can we do together to make sure that we get to this point? So that's how I'm approaching the team, whether it be remote, well, they're all remote now. So, but it's, I, we can't demand expectations on remote. They have to tell me what they can accomplish. There's still some goals as an overall entity at Commerce that we wanna accomplish. Um, so how do you as an individual get to here, not here, what do you need from me to make it to here? And um, it's been really well received. We've been able to get to that. How do I use project software? I have not found a decent project software, I'll admit it. Uh, and this came from before. Uh, the, uh, Tammy, Joe, and Heather can understand this. Um, we use Teams as a project software right now, and it sucks. It really does because I can't get everybody on there. Um, it's not because there are good softwares out there and bad softwares out there. I haven't mandated anybody to use it. Now, um, part of our commerce team is going to be using uh, the Asana coming up real soon um, to manage the tourism end of it. Um, I'm hoping it works um, because I haven't, because it's a culture shift a little bit with us, you know, everybody was in an office, everybody was in an office, but me, no, everybody's remote. Um, it's been a lot of trial and error. We have Excel spreadsheets on a server 
that people are supposed to enter into. Um, we have a CRM system that they're supposed to enter into. Um, we don't have anything good. And so right now it's that adjusting one piece at a time. Um, after we get into that set of goals and we can write them down and be able to get to them, we're going to need to go back to and utilize our CRM software, which is built um, for uh, commerce as a whole and needs upgrades. I don't have any good answers. I have searched also. I have asked and asked and asked everyone, what do you use? What do you use? And it comes down to what can your entire team agree to use and use it. I see Teal is, loves Asana. So that's a good one to look into, but it comes back to your entire team. Not one person out there says, no, I'm not going to use it. And that goes all the way from in commerce, especially it's going to go all the way from the people who answer the phones all the way to the top senior officials. Um, so I've got a big hurdle. And so that's why I haven't tackled that one yet. I'm, I'm, I will, I will tackle it. Definitely. Um, there's working well on campus folks assume the remote staff weren't fully working. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, once again, I go back to the goal setting, be very transparent. It's going to be up to you as a remote worker to start that transparency. Um, there is absolutely, um, you can't be, your boss can't mandate it that you're working. You have to prove that you are to begin with, build that trust, build that, um, uh, results driven. So you may have to be uh, very responsive on the hours you set, set your hours. Um, you may have to be immediately responsive. So they know, Hey, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Um, but as they grow to trust the fact that you're getting the projects done, once again, set goals, objectives, clear objectives, clear goals on here's the projects I am working on. Be very transparent with everyone. Um, you'll gain the trust, but it, yeah, it does take some time for people who are traditional office space people to believe that you're working when in fact, I have found most everybody is much more productive when they're at home um, or working remotely uh, because the distractions are much less. I, I got so I hated to go into the office because people would talk to me like, stop talking to me. I just want to go get my coffee. You're just disrupting me. Okay, um, a quick five minutes, less than five minutes on uh, Department of Commerce updates. A big one coming up which happened at noon today, and since you're here, you weren't on it, was a business briefing regarding the next round of hospitality economic resiliency grants. Those will be geared towards uh, restaurants, bars, uh, some certain event venues. Uh, if they did not get their full $25,000 in the first round, they're eligible to receive up to that amount, or if they hadn't applied yet, it's $25,000. Those grants open February 4th. So if you are working with or for a restaurant, a bar, a hospitality style industry, this is reimbursable dollars that can help uh, keep them afloat. So pass the word, tell them to go to uh, the nd.gov uh, site, uh, just Google commerce HERG grant, North Dakota HERG grant. Um, it'll bring you right to it. We've done a great job trying to do that. Um, I can always reply and get you insight on that. Uh, the video is really good on how to fill it out if you've never done it. Um, you just need to make sure that you have um, the actual invoice or expense and um, proof that you paid it. And this goes for payroll, operational expenses, utilities, rent, um, repairs. If your business had some repairs you had to do, this is all good stuff. So um, pass the word, please. We have $30 million left. We need to spend it. We're not, we don't want to give it back to anybody else, believe me. Nope. Um, the second thing that's going on in commerce um, along with that granting is some funding that is in community services. Community services will have some support for homeless and for other shelters along with emergency rent grants. If you're working with somebody who's um, having a difficult time or you know somebody who lost their job, there is going to be additional funds available for them to be able to um, stay in their location a little bit longer, get some assistance on uh, rent and food. So there's there's funds coming from the government on that one. Uh, industry and uh, manufacturing. Manufacturing has an automated task credit uh, that is due, um, that application is due for on Friday. And that allows people who have uh, intent for automation manufacturing to get some tax credits, up to 20% tax credits. So those of you that uh, know that your business has been through automation or is intending to do automation in the next year, 
take a look at that application. It's short time, but it do, but it can get done in that short time. Legislatively, we're back in, of course, to session. And uh, we have asked for an increase in several programs and a reduction in others. One of the programs we're asking for an increase for is the LIFT fund. And that LIFT fund um, allows for both research and new companies to come in and be able to receive some grant funds, uh, reimbursable cost funds, to be able to um, test out their products, expand their research, do some new things. So we're hoping to have a significant increase in that one. We are also working with the intermodal site in Minot in hopes to be able to support that as it goes in an expansion because that intermodal site, if you're not familiar with the Minot area, is an opportunity for a lot of businesses, not just agriculture, but a lot of businesses. We were looking at an RV a dealer that was looking at coming to North Dakota. Well, he ships his product everywhere. If you could put it in a, in a container and ship it out, um, saves a lot of money for him. So the intermodal is another positive thing that we're working at. And um, also we're looking at increasing our development fund, which is extremely low interest, takes um, second or thirds uh, company and um, could be supportive of those new businesses that are looking at coming to North Dakota or expanding in North Dakota. So we've got lots of things, primary sector and value added ag. Uh, the new USDA funding allowed uh, meat production and poultry production facilities to become graded so they can start selling. So we've got meat facility or butcher shops out there that are looking at starting or expanding, which is good for anyone who likes to buy their beef or poultry locally. Those are good things we're really gonna push hard on. Um, we've also been pushing on the UAS systems, the uh, unmanned aerials, which has been a past and current uh, system for that, along with knowledge-based systems. Uh, this is one of my thing that I'm hoping to with everybody on this call right now, I'm feeling is a knowledge based worker. You are valued for your intelligence, you're valued for your skills. Um, very few of us anymore actually make anything with our hands outside making messes. That is, we're going to push that side on the community development side. And how can we attract more knowledge based workers into North Dakota, tying into the remote work, tying into our amazing, amazing infrastructure of of service um, and bring those into our communities because you can live and work anywhere as long as you have the bandwidth and the house that you can move into. So those are the hard pushes. We will, as I said, be integrating our develop economic developers, the primary sector into community developers, um, into tourism, into community services, into work and then workforce and research to be able to come into communities and hopefully offer some very, um, good subject matter experts, but we don't know it's out there unless you tell us. So if you have any projects that you hear about, um, any needs that you hear about, um, opportunities or questions, send them to me, please. Whether you are a volunteer uh, working on a community park or an art project um, or planning, or you have heard through the grapevine that this manufacturing company wants to expand or this person has a great idea, I don't read the Fargo form, but the P, um, cat litter, oh, I wish I would have thought of it, great idea. Those are the things that we need to hear about because we do have resources and support and we are there to help you out. Whoa, left, six minutes to spare. Jill, any questions, yes. anybody else, go for it. Yes, we got about five minutes left, so get your questions in. And it can be commerce questions, and if I don't know the answer, I'll send them to you, believe me. Oh, maybe we get five minutes back in our day or else people are busy typing one or the other. Well, we appreciate everybody who logged in and shared comments and asked questions. And we are going to be posting our webinars on our website. So the links will be there eventually. You can go back and watch any webinars that you want or if you missed one, you can check in there. And as I said, if you need any of those links that we've talked about, um, I can put them on, I, I'll put together several links and put them on the website or I'll send them to Jill um, and she can get them out to you. I know you guys have regular updates, um, but if there's ever a question that I can help with, whatever I can help with remote work or definitely with commerce and activities that are occurring out there, give me a holler. I am. Um, I really like what I'm doing now and I like to be able to do good. So give me that chance. Well, 
Well, thank you, everyone. This ends our webinar then. Thank you, Maria.